Hello there everyone and welcome back to Old Row Blues in which we're playing as the Bone Cohort using the Old Row Blues Bone Cohort submod. I'm your host Mr. Mocha Lover, but we have Borealis here leading us and we gotta talk about the road to Oregon. Uh, which I read last time, so if you read this again please go ahead. But that being said, we're picking up pretty much where we left off last time. So, we need to send Legionnaires, or Legionaries, against the Odious King. As well as the Pilgrim. <clears throat> We have the Odysseus King Rebels, not very good if not completed, versus the Seraph Pilgrims settling down. Right now, we have the Bone Road, of course, it's a future project making the Northwest into a desolate and heavily depopulated area. All the population will be pushed into city states connected by very efficient and well protected highways. We have the Odious King Rebellion, who's weekly manpower, recruitable population, division recovery rate a few decades ago. A strange ghoul arrived with the Bone Dancer lands from the south. They seemed capable of things some might consider to be unnatural. Strange abilities of enthrallment, and with melody strange and enticing. The Odious King. He used to have a sway over the Bone Dancers, to the point that the name of the Bone Dancers themselves came from his Bone Dances, but now he's an open rebellion against the rule. <coughs> and the Seraph Pilgrims. A group of Heaven's Gate Pilgrims known as the Seraph Lords have made their way to the Bone Dancers lands. They seek to proselytize and convert them into the ways of the Steam with them. They bring some of the advanced technology used by Heaven's Gate, AER Steam Cores, Crusader uh, Grade Power Armor, and even components to hook up their lands with the Steam Powers Grid itself, so. We got all that going on. Huh. And we use up 25 political power for this. <clears throat> so we only need at least 350 pieces of equipment. And we have none. Because we just made another division. Oh boy. So that's the case. We have 162. A growing threat. <clears throat> the dangerous balance of the Bone Corps. As it was now named, it was quite hard to understand for outsiders, but for them. The leaders of the war band of raiders were all the same. Men who only won war. Suffering and death to everyone they did not wear the colors. But the politics of it were harder and more complicated than I thought, as it was a truly ideological difference of play. The Bone Centurion was not a reformer of the idea of Legion. He simply saw it as the right way <clears throat> of reaching a new enlightenment, a new world. Using it as fitting to accomplish whatever task Mars and thus Kaiser had given them. Meanwhile, other Centurions did not see it that way. They believed that Borealis was straying from the original ideas of the Legion, that he was seeking to become a rogue warlord, disobeying Kaiser's orders. <clears throat> and now, even if they had heed his words and followed his orders, they slowly started to unveil plots and plans for takeover. The Bone Centurion had to watch his back and find a way to deal with them before their influence got too high or if he took too long on his mission. We've got our eyes open. That's not good. But we're here anyways. So, perfectly balanced, we're at about. <clears throat> excuse me. 5%. And we're going to assassinate Coriblis because we need to. We could bribe him, <coughs> but all that would do is take even longer to get rid of him, I think. Oh wait, it costs five steeple things we don't have money for. Because later on, it's going to cost us a lot of other stuff to do uh, to get rid of him too. Not what should, what should the cannons do, do though. Assassinate him. He should be gone. That took 60 days to do that. And we'll make this go farther to the left. We could have bribed him, but it makes it go to level 15, which was worse for us over here. But we can get rid of 2,000 slaves, right? There you go. Just in case we need it. So, so we can't do any of this. <clears throat> Our own by the Bone Cohort. Oh. Taking up arms. Seraph Lords. Well, the next focus we're going to do is what? State of the Cohort? That would probably be good to do. Lessons. Bicycles are nice. We don't really need it, though. Counterintelligence. The Northern Forum. Promote caravan companies. Get 50 dinaris. That's not bad. Nova Borean Farms. More money. So then works up settling the land. The problem of cannibalism. Well, we could probably do that one. Another civilization would take their time in dealing with the stupid and pointless activity that the tribals in Oregon do. Even if cannibalism isn't shamed or against the law of the Legion, it's too much of a waste of resources. Every loud and proud cannibal will be crossing our roads that fear that keep others the fear will keep others in line. No mercy for the wicked, of course. Meeting the Road Warrior, the Bone Centurion. Moving into the depths. <clears throat> An almost empty and rapid, uh, ravaged future tech facility. This level wasn't filled with radiation, so it had been chosen to be made in the most secure cell in the, in the cohort. Now, instead of cage and waiting judgment, a man called Crane was sitting on the ground. Due to the respect the Bone Dancers gave to him, he was still fully armored and his face always hidden by the skull helmet. But the Bone Centurion and Green Eyes looked down at him. It didn't matter what the Centurion said, but what Cranium answered, Cranium would join the Bone Cohort. You have beaten me. Fair and square, let me lead your warriors. Cranium will join ranks as a general advisor. We get motorization. You are no Bone Dancer. 
You will rot in oblivion. Breaking a skull. Oh. Oh, we have stuff up here. The conquest of the northwest. More speed, division, army experience gain goes way down because manpower goes down. Oh god. Oh. Conquest of the northwest. Oh. War goal against the Shoshone Nation. Interesting. Okay, so we want to go that way then. Oh, what's this? The Legion of Bones. What is this one? Bricking a skull. Oh, where the heck is that? Oh. Slavery is a state of mind. Oh, to shatter a hand. Road Warrior of the 84. Breaking a skull. Technology motorization. Do we want to become motorized? We don't really need it. Uh, I kind of want him as our group here, but we'll go with that one. As much as cool as that be, but whatever. Cranium has been a disgrace. His ideas about the road warrior are quite useless, and he has no use for us. Let his bones become part of the new mighty throne. Interesting. Well, the conquest of the Northwest. Our centurions have been called into the war tent. The twins are making the plans. The conquest of the Northwest has started. Should I show any conquest will be necessary for this one then? Weirdly enough, even even the most important and strategic target would be the raiders of Kemal to the south, the Bone Dancers, or Bone Centurion. And his brother have chosen to strike east to settle a personal matter. So we need more guns. Four thousand slaves. We could purchase them, but we do need to save a little bit of money here too. Oh boy. Buy slaves with influence. Give it only one thousand slaves. Give it to the centurions. Good God. The Bone Road, of course. Odysseus, King Rebellion. Problem cannibalism is good to get rid of. But if we go to war with someone else, we might have to get more tip equipment as well. And we definitely need more equipment. Tolerant, trouble customs. We're going to need those guns pretty quickly, actually. Guys, this takes 60 days to do. Can I wait seven days to get 300? Yeah, I guess technically we could. Because after that, Bone Conquest, Rare Breakers, Mail Drinkers, Bone Cohorts, Claims. Huh. Troll Warn. I don't know if we can really beat the Troll Warn either right now. Oh, uh, what do we have here? Oh, that'd be good to do. <clears throat> Well, I'll just settle in the lamb. With the recent conquest complete, one of the most important matters after burning, pillaging, and butchering our way through Oregon is to make our newly conquered lands into lands worthy of a legionary. Sooner or later, civilization will come to the forests and hills of Oregon and will come from the hard work or hard working hand of the cohort. Also, we are on historical. I, didn't, I don't think I said that last time, but we are on historical. Oh, there we go. So, what happens after this? Oh, this is what happens. We get some equipment back, we get some manpower back, which is good and all, but still. And a song enticing. An enticing song. Centurion. The old ghoul spoke as Borealis entered his cell in the depths of the future tech facility. Of course he was chained to the wall and multiple legionaries were observing while keeping guard of him. They were changed every few hours due to the known abilities of the Odious King, how he could drive people insane with the words that came from the hooded figure. I can hear you, I can feel you. You have an ability that so many would dream to have. The centurion approached closer to the bars, feeling the music of song coming out of the old ghoul. You can be my apprentice. I teach you the ways of the music, how one can control and lead the people with one's mind. Your course. Tell me about your secrets, old man. Take up the offer given by the odious king. Adds one empty ascendable trade slot. Place unknown trade slot with pontif 
Pontifex. Magos. Oh. That's Boreas as a Psyker to balance power. Plus 0.2. Appoint an advisor enslaved Odious with effect. Oh, weekly stability goes down. You be executed tomorrow. You're to be too dangerous. Oh, so uh, replace unknown trait with Primus Entropatus. More enforcer attack and defense. Interesting. We could power to change. A dark gift. The Otis King still has a stash of Gex. Now that he's enslaved to the well of the cohort, he has shown us a gift. Uh, he gave us a showing of his gift of knowledge and objects. A clean gift. Except the pilgrims. Oh. Oh, look at that. 20 combo with. That's nice. Ferocious loyalty. I kind of like that one. But it sounds... Uh, I like Cult of Personality, just because that sounds like very much we need. Um, I'm going to go Max, uh, max Banner. And more planning. Planning is good. Nice. At least we got rid of that. Oh, also, I did choose... There's something up here. So here... I already chose this one, Northwestern Slavery. By doing the missions in this interface, you can deal with the defeated leaders of the nations that the Bolton Cohort has conquered. If you're ruthless and brutal, it would help you with your standing with the Centurions, but if you're too friendly with the locals, it would increase power, their balance power. So I chose this one earlier. I didn't do very much, I guess. It costs, like, 10 political power, though. In the first steps of taking on the Centurion Council, Borealis could not afford to waste time, let alone the riches of his growing cohort, so to further enrich a fattened fool such as Corablis, and for that reason, his life had to come to an end. Thus, during the dead of night, while most of the Council was busy delegating yet another meaningless battle of eagles. Corablis sat in his food room, devouring a fish dinner. Surrounding the centurion was a, was a decade of men. Borealis stepped into the room, wielding his gladius. Corablis, for the crime of hedonism and untold corruption within his Kaiser's legion, it's my solemn duty to put you to death. The fat centurion shook his head. Borealis, don't you know? A fish fork entered the neck of a legionnaire. A spoon ripped out of the eye of the dec decanus leading them. You never interrupt a man when he's eating. And so it began a clash that lasted for many minutes, the stuff Corablis showing that even with his lethargy, he could still make for an effective foe, matching moves against machetes and swords of the decade's men, and even Borealis himself with nothing more than silverware and food remnants. It would be the latter that would bring about his demise, as Corablis fought and continued to snack in an almost leisurely manner, taking bites and nibbles of the various foodstuffs that hadn't been ruined in the fighting. But when he got back to the main course of fish, a sudden tackle from Borealis sent the bones of the fish down the wrong pipe, resulting in Corablis entering a coughing fit. A fit that ended with the tip of a Borealis' gladius, poking through his stomach, slashing right through him. So ends the life of the fattest fish in the Legion. So now it should be not decreasing nearly as much. Forging is good. And improvising or improvised obstructions. We need more slaves. A cause of concern with the current situation in Corablis done, the rest of the Centurions have raised their concerns. It was clear that Borealis and Australis were taking the cohort in a row that was different from what Kaisar wanted. But the twins had tried to remain calm and plead, plead with them, almost speaking about the compromise for ideals, other legionnaires and their own pragmatism to succeed on Kaisar's great plan. <clears throat> Nonetheless, the Centurions are starting to doubt the leadership of the so-called Bone Centurion and his brother. Things could get worse. Ah, oh, shnikes. So we have medium popularity, huh? Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. A dark gift. We're gonna settle the land first. Brutally smack them. for XP though. Tell you what. Oh, can we actually make things now? Oh, we can actually make things. Look at that. Wow. Go figure. Centurion Stoltus. Saltus. Oh, actually, do we really want him here? Astralis probably would be better. Because I know he's uh, very loyal to us. No, I'm actually going to switch him mid-battle. Mid 
Got some nerd rage, huh? Nice. Power on problems. Hannah laid her in a makeshift bed, eyes blood shot and wide open. The end of the second season had come, and yet she'd failed in the power armor's reconstruction. Who knew each organ would be so devoid of pristine metals and working servos, especially over the unfinished part of being the arm? Yet the terminal that sat beside her made no mistake. The day of her would be Savior, would come to see her finished result was today, and she knew from experience that he was the only one to get up early. Found the humps of leather boots on the ground, seemed to seal her face as a bulky bicep stretched into her tent, but it was not Boreal House that came to see her, rather. It was someone she had seen time and again about in the fledgling city, but never had time to introduce herself to you. So you're the little ex-brotherhood lady that promised Borealis his own shiny piece of metal, huh? The age boys gave us a low chuckle. Seems to me that you upheld most of the agreement. Can't say Borealis will think the same when he comes to visit in the next hour, though. The brotherhood woman rose from her bed, so taking in the sight of the figure as he circled the armor on this workbench, converted from a pre-war tow truck. Rubbing her eyes, Hannah shifted to her terminal. I suppose that's the gist of it, yes, and I presume you're the one of the centurion councilman he's always griping about? Another hearty laugh, my dear, I'm a centurion, but the only people I serve are the twins, though it seems that to me that you could be lent a hand, or an arm, or rather. He thrust his right arm out of the light and emitted by the single working bulb in the tent. And I guess, but that's T-45 D-Series. Where did you get this? Wait, don't answer that. The elder centurion smiled, rolling his eyes. Don't worry about me being sentimental or attached to it. I just can have another arm from the others, and don't worry, Borealis will just want to see a pristine set. He's never been one for wearing hunks of metal like these. Probably where they'd fall over and make a fool of himself in front of the council. And with that, they now power arm less centurion departed. The next hour spent in a frantic flurry of welding, scrapping, and... Uh, worrying, but Hannah managed to finish the, just as a expected thumb to the bow and centurion approached. You're doing well, Hannah. Perhaps there's hope for you next. Yet. Interesting. Grind that army XP. We need it. Ah, I know it's talking about exactly what we wanted. Beautiful. Good. Settling the land. Hon honestas industria prudentia. Honesty, industry, prudence. The three virtues taught to all slaves of the cohort. Let these three words define those that labor for the greater good and let them find spiteful pride in their duty. Killing the seraphs, the crossroads and pyres along the road were filled with the so-called Christian pilgrims after the legionaries wiped them all. There were no influence from those steam worshippers left, even a few Mormons and Neo-Christians remained. Borealis felt as if he had made a mistake. I did what I had to. Oh, take a photo. 3,000 slaves. How do I get more slaves? Ah. Oh. Oh. Personal records will be available in a future update, which we'll come back to this one sometime in the future as well. Very good. Oh, look at that, more attack and recruitable population. Bone Road with Bone Road 1. Bone Conquest. Kemalt. Conquest. The train yard and armories of the Kemalt will be a good second target in our conquest of Oregon. If we secure them enough, our conquest won't be delayed at all. And then another Bear River. Four hundred years before, the Shoshone were massacred in eastern Idaho. Now as they lay dead in the western uh, Idaho, the massacres of Oil Grand View will be nothing but a footnote in their minds and no books will be written about them. My looks, huh? Followers of the Apocalypse. We best keep those anarchists from our land. Shoot them or something, huh? Oh. Our people are so violent that we can simply scare them away, the followers, from you approaching your lands. Yeah, it's more sport. I like it. Less stability, more war sport. Okay, well, it is what it is. Where are we at for this? 36%. Not bad. Give slaves a piece of the centurion council, which we might have to do some point. Assassin Isaiah. So it, minus 50 towards the side of the centurion council. Or we could bribe him and get, retire Rufina from the bone cohort. It hurts to build him more, but Centurion Isaiah could be fired finally. Isaiah gives us more recruitable population, loses stability, loses attack, loses training time, and elite support, which is fine with us. And we could put this guy in here instead. Which we actually might want to do. Then we could remove him. It costs a lot of political power in the end. And But it would take away our woman here, which I don't want to lose Rufino. It's good for stability and experience, such as losses. 
But does it hurt when I touch you here? So I'm actually going to do that one because we'll have to do the same thing for Saltus eventually, and uh, Saltus and Defectum is going to be really tough to deal with. But we're going to bribe him since we're here. Isaiah is asking for Rufina, our doctor. We could give her to the Butcher. After all, what is one life for loyalty? Sorry. It's for the good of the group, though. So you got to keep pushing this up. And we're going to do this one next. Oh, that's in it matters. A slave is more like a child. A child does not know how the world works. A child that does not know what is right for them. Our duty as legionaries. 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 And members of the Bone Court is to teach them. To give them meaning and reason to their lives. Australis walked from one corner to the other of the main plaza. He spoke to different peoples in the Nova Borea. They do not th know the right way of living. Uh, they hate us. They detest us. But we're giving them true purpose. Through hardship and dedication. They can find satisfaction on their duties. Their jobs and assignments. Not using cannons. Alcohol or other pointless things. But striving to work for the cohort. Our cohort. Australia stopped in the middle. As legionary slaves and traitors surround him. The Bone Centurion is a ruler. Not because he is the strongest nor smartest. Mars chose him. His will uh, is so immense that God himself has given him the energy to do so. We've been high behind pretensions of power and rights. Not him, no. All of you will learn it sooner or later. The sooner you believe in it, the easiest, easiest your life will be. Boreas is your father. You may not agree with how he does things, but it is, it's all being done for your own good. Australia spoke as he lifted his hands in exclamation towards the Bone Castrum. Which Borealis was inside governing them all. Ave, true to Borealis. The multitude of Nova Borea yelled in unison. So, we can't produce anything while we're not at war. Interesting. Because the stability's got awful. I have a barely equipped expedition. Um, well, we still have travel stuff here, too. Are we actually producing anything yet? No, we're not. Still doing that, which is good. Dogs would be nice. Saws would be nice. We don't have to have those. Maybe this one next time. Interesting. Because I would like this guy too. More elite support is not great, but you get more attack. Oh. We have 8,000 slaves. Anything else here? Ah! This person hasn't been recruited or found yet. Come on, I want to go to war. Losing infantry equipment, which is not good. Hassel Tycho, Petro Chico, Travel Scout Kits. Support equipment would be nice too. Let's see if we can do anything here. Mm. Argonian Scrapyards. Support equipment, machetes, 3,000 more slaves, legionary autocenship, nomadic lifestyle, a cohort of slaves. This focus will upgrade their officorium ab famulatus. Camp followers, buying female slaves. Ooh. Intermediate exploitation tech, women at home. Accept the pilgrims. Give women some rights. This will not go well with centurions. You'll only be able to take this focus safely if you kill Carbless. Kill them all. Women auxiliaries. Cannibal reformation programs. Women scouts. Women leaders. Fimo Dakani. Women legionnaires. Women's equality. Someday, maybe. Women of the cohort. Mothers of the cohort. Matrons of the cohort. And legionary families. Hmm. Women at home. Oh, Shatter Hand. Shatter Hand is one of the best warlords that the Bone Dancers have ever had, of course. We're going to ask him kindly. Let's see how we do. Move in. Do 
Shatterhand. Shatterhand was one of the best generals that Oregon had ever seen. His name was known all over the Northwest. But for the cohort, it did not matter. The man was beaten and almost dead by the time Borealis found him on the, in his cell. He was barely able to lift his eyes at the centurion, meeting the green orbs out uh, or his eyes. Get up, be born anew. You will be part of something new. Shatterhand joins the ranks. You are no longer useful. Of course. So we do get. We, we can make it. Do all this stuff. Warriors, not diplomats. Borealis rules over the Bone Cohort, crucifying those who fight back, enslaving the others. They intend to control the Northwest and complete their objective, fighting everyone who dares to enter their domain. Conquerors of the Northwest. Oh, oh yeah, that'd be good to get rid of. Better division recovery and speed, though. Fighting cannibalism, which will be removed within a month. Bone Road. So, how do we get... How are we able to actually produce stuff now? Oh, it's because we have, we're at war, that's why. Ah, so there's that. Okay, that's war support. That's the house. At war, increases by 90%. So then we can actually make stuff. Interesting. I didn't realize that. I did not realize that at all. Did I? Oof. Silly me. Silly me. Mr. Mocha Lover. Oh, we got encircled. Not for long, though. There you go. Honestly, if we're at war, I'm okay with it, kind of, you know. Gives us more stability and war support and whatnot. And it would also give us more army XP, too, so. Just go in there, it's fine. Beautiful. Grind them out. There's a few more guns, but that's alright. See what happens. A difficult transaction. Rufina was an incredibly simple woman to Borealis, not unlike a pet or uh, one of those fancy machines he had heard so much about, up from prolificates. Keep her fed, water, and relatively happy, she'd do whatever it was she wished her to do. Uh, within reason. This, on the other hand, was anything but reasonable to her, at least. That's why the Bone Centurion had to keep the true purpose of the document she had signed in leading to, her, to Isaiah, a uh, new clubhouse from her. <laughs> Ooh, what a beautiful, fanciful beauty, building. You said the patient's right in here, right, Bori? He kept looking forward. Uh, yeah, the, the doors opened. The walls began to sweep with the sound of what he could only assume was wedding or perhaps more intimate music. He should have known Isaiah's would be this difficult and obvious above his intentions, especially when it came to pledging his loyalty to Borealis and Borealis alone. If he had adjusted her coveralls, growing slightly worried at the intimate imagery. Well, now this is peculiar. Are you sure you're right about this, Centurion? His title. She used it rarely ever since they met, preferring the ridiculous nickname she thought up to have her use it now. He had to make sure that the deal was done. He'd come too far to stop. A tinny voice emerged. From the speaker systems throughout the building, now Centurion, I was glad you decided to uphold your end of our bargain, and my sweet, sweet Rufino. I have plans for you, don't worry, but where are my manners? On the, on the fifth floor, don't keep me waiting, honey. Rufino's now beginning to panic, heading back to the door before being pulled back by Borealis. She shrieked. I don't want to go. No, not to him. Don't do this, please. For the love of God, Mars, whoever, just stop. She began a ball, balling up, resisting his force. The intercom blurred again. By Mars, she's as big of a baby as that fatty Corby. At least her fat went to the right places. <clears throat> That's right. Fine, fine. Just leave her there, Centurion. I'll see to her myself. Uh, the paper sealed Rufina's fate. Isaiah was her master now. Anxiety. It was undeniable. The twins were getting rid of the other Centurions, removing their influence and true power in the cohort. They were cementing their power as the sole force of command in the whole cohort without... Oh, my bad. We did too well. Uh, so without support from anyone else other than themselves, their many centurions had to work quick and hard before doom came to them, listening to Defectum's words. Kaiser was not going to look kindly into his huge betrayal and dishonor. Sooner or later, they'd act before Mars' fury came upon them, and Morgan would be blasted in flames. Event tribute. Kill yourselves. Klamath. Timberline. Honestly, I want to get rid of the, the, those guys. Carcass walkers, marrow drinkers, and rib breakers. All of them were bone dusters in the past. But they have a splendor due to the weak control of the leaders of old. Let us reclaim our rightful lands into the cohort and, of course, get some big bones from those trolls. To enslave the Shoshone. The Shoshone are no people. They reminded Borealis of the Apache and even part of the Navajo. No Navajo joined this expedition. Maybe it was too much of a suicide for them. But these are not their original lands. These were the lands of the Borealis and Australis. Of his father before them and his father before him. Bone Dancer lands which should have been taken over through the years due to the horrible management of the Bone Dancers. 
Grindstone Airport will give us some knowledge on aircraft and the farmers to the east will be relocated. Grand View will be raised to the ground. A new city state will be formed somewhere else, but the Bone Centurion had something else in mind. Brother, follow me. Yes, brother. Black Mesa Farms and McDermott Desolation remove their uh, materials. And we get Grand View's name to Do Domus. Get in Corn Do Grand View. Ooh, 2,000 slaves. Our core states will be renamed in the style of the Bone Court. A home in a little hill. As Boreas walked through the vegetation without any escort, except his twin brother, he smelled the air of the scent of the past. His memory flew by his mind. He could hear a song, a beautiful song his mother used to sing. His eyes got teary, and he stopped before the guy out of the Crimson Forest, in which they were. The green started a few meters ahead. Brother, are you fine? Australis asked, putting a hand on the shoulder of his brother, worrying, looking at him as a younger. Twin had never seen a Boreas has cried all. Let's move on. The bones of Tyrion spoke seriously. At last, over that small hill, overlooking a huge field. Completely in disrepair, looted, and almost burned and abandoned their house. Their childhood home, their music, the song going through Boreas's mind got stronger, almost deafening as he walked inside, not caring if his brother was trying to stop him as he could be dangerous. Who knew what could be inside? That did not stop him, though. He followed the sound, the song, and at last, in his parents' bedroom, inside a drawer, he found the source of the song. A photo. Some things are best forgotten. He left the photo. Apathy. Passiveness. Obedience. Simplicity. Oneness. And immutability. Nice. So we need more political power. Or we can just bribe them. So what can we do this one? Saltus would die. Moves 100% towards the side of Centurion. Can we afford that? We could bribe him. He's worth 50. Can we do that, really? You know what? We can assassinate him. We're gonna bribe him. We did. We bribed the other guys. We're gonna bribe this guy, too. Another town on the list. You are a bunch of savages, murderers, and slavers. Old men yelled as the legionnaires were rounding up another settlement. Another one. So many in the wastes. It was just Wednesday for them. Putting all the settlers on the ground in the middle of a clearing. You are gonna kill us all. You are monsters. We're some raiders. The woman kept yelling, but the, the kindness of the group of legionaries. Or legionnaires. Oh. With his fear feathered helmet moved on top of a crate and finally addressed that fearful crowd, your men fought us. You did not surrender. You chose to believe that we were here to kill you all, to do such unspeakable things. And now their bones are being harvested, their skin and flesh is being carved out of their bodies so their true self-worth will be revealed to us. You're all going to be enslaved, you'll become one of the cohort in servitude. will be part of us, and if you, you will know no other life. If you refuse, you will join them, but do not despair if your work is good, if you do your duty correctly. You'll be freed, and you'll become not just a slave, but part of us. Not a simple tool of voice to be heard, true to Mars and the Bone Centurion. The woman just kept yelling, not stopping until a legionary stopped her, and she never spoke again. Let's go to the next town. The conquest of the Timberline to the north is of the much, most important and dangerous matters at our hand. The men of the force are strong, resilient, and smart. They are a bastion of the so-called so freedom, and they need to be destroyed before we head east. The people of Oregon need to be reminded that we are here to stay. Now that the situation has calmed down, when you figure out what we do with the cohort, there are different paths. Choosing to follow the main doctrine given by Khazar, move into the new design of Boreas and his men. Heavily armored legionaries, which work as shock troops. So we want to go with him. Centurion Council. No, they're war, war goals, huh? I don't mind if he's inspirational, though. You learn more faster. Yeah, just keep learning. Screw it. Place and surround him. I got quite a bit of a militia, just fine, whatever, we don't care. Make him stronger. Smoke signals are good. Find him, beat the crap out of them. Grind him into dust.
Good, we've all our soldiers down here. I'll break them eventually. We split them. Let's see what we can actually do, though. God dang, they're actually forcing defense now, too, huh? I do want to go... Well, well, since we're going this way anyways, I'm going to go that way then. Yeah. The rail yard of the Kimmel is filled with weapons of old and other resources. Bringing them, connecting them to our roads, will bring quite the activity to the lands south of Nova Borea. No, Nova Borea. Oh, no matter of territories. Do the elite support, which I don't really want. Ah. Lose attack. Look at this guy. I don't want to get rid of him. Acquire lead. Oh, he's having an offer. Yeah, I can't do that. Uh, I don't want more daily lead support, but I could use more the more of the attack. Yeah, I'll do it anyways. One step forward, the halls of the Future Tech facility rang hollow. As a summons from the Borealis have brought them both the Centurion Council as well as his most trusted associates together. All the roots and upheavals within the cohort's leadership have put tensions on both sides. The meeting organized today, much like it had with prior meetings of similar importance in nature, was helped by Borealis to stabilize things in his favor while also appeasing the Council for the time being. Eridanos came from out behind a corridor supported by Australis. A larger man wore a hodgepodge of both pre-war quality fibers and plating alongside Legion adornments and changes to the suit, such as the addition of a red-plumed crest to the headgear, making it appear as a far more advanced part of or advanced Gallia. Borealis came out from the same quarter, brandishing a riot shotgun. I don't wish to take up much of your time today. I'm well aware of more pressing matters. That said, I wish to demonstrate the capability of something that a close person to me, whom I shall not name, discovered in the underground storage facilities recently. It came with a pre-war note, thankfully still legible. Pulling out a worn and wrinkled piece of paper, Borealis read, You want a fast, cheap, and good, and that's what Future Tech, a trusted division of Alltech, delivers. By using a flexible nanomuscle wave alongside plating and enhancing protection with the same chemical enhancements seen on the T-51B, we reduced our testing cycle from weeks to days, and I'm confident that we can get this out to cover the dozens of elite units planned for the martial law next month. Better yet, it'll be out the cost and offer to us the mobility. All we need is a balance of our funding, a few more techs, and another experienced success subject. I know resources are stretched to the breaking point, but just more delays will jeopardize the schedule, so please respond soon. Borealis folded the note, unfortunately. Given what my associate had found, the armor was never completed due to lack of resources. He cocked a shotgun, and so I'm doing it myself, two steps back. Borealis fired the shotgun directly at Eridanus. Wow. Very nice. A flurry of silver pieces erupted from the barrels, directly striking the armor. Uh, coins lodged themselves in various places. <clears throat> Yet not a single one seemed to have hit Aerodonis' flesh itself, though Aerodonis had been preparing. The force of the projectiles along with the closeness of the shots still sent him flying back onto the floor, yet as he got up, removing each piece of armor, not a single solitary scratch could be seen on him. Isaiah was the first to speak upon the conclusion of the demonstration. Funny Corby isn't here. He either would have had, fl had a fit over the waste of good money, or would be shaming himself like a dog to collect it, hoping to buy his next meal. We inquired upon the mention of Corbulus. Whether it was out of a simple lack of attendance, or that the corpulent centurion was no longer among the living, it was near the concern. Defect him. Well, I swept the helmet from Eridanus, ignoring Isaiah's comment. The point blank shot. No severe damage, no injuries. Good for primes. So let's spoke to Eridanus, unscathed skin, his finger revealing a heavily softened stomach. Rather than the muscular abdomen, he earned a reputation for prior to the bone cohort's departure. Though Eridanus's flabby figure does not represent even a shred of anyone in the cohort, save a few, he raised an eyebrow towards one of the attendees who, in the stress and pride of leadership, will also earn fuller figures in Oregon than they had in the Legion lands. I do believe that this should do as well on the slaving grounds. What do you say, Councilman? Years of various demeanors echoed throughout the chamber. Ooh.
You know what? You help it here. Good. Ancient taxes will be good as well. Yeah, now we're taking it. Taking over the railway. Yard. A rail yard. The lands of the Kamal was such a reminder of home. Of course, not Arizona, but the lands of the Bone Dancers. The geography was almost the same, a bit more mountainous in a way, but nonetheless, they would be a great addition to the cohort. Legionaries moved under the main city of the Kamults, the so-called station filled with armories and storage areas. It was a good conquest, such an impressive stock of weapons that would surely help the cohort in its future conquests. Kamult were chained and bound. All the people and materials outside of the boundaries of the city-state were moved and transported to the capital of the new state, and of course, it was renamed in honor of the Bone Centurion's brother. Nova Ostra was his new name. Brother, do you like it? Good, we get infantry equipment, demo equipment, anti-tank, and new, uh, the blueprint basically for heavy ballistic weaponry, Kamult station changes to Nova Ostra, more for scrap. Nice. Gains a core on it, too. That's fantastic. Now, this war is going to be a pain in the butt. Oh, who do we have here? Oh, Troll Warren. Oh, God. Send supplies to Kamlo. Well, since we've got it, one question might be why are we sending supplies to some raiders, but Australis has some interesting idea. We'll also serve, uh, send several legionaries and advisors to Kamlo, letting us send more volunteers, maybe in the future, we should deal with them if they survive. Resistor, I hardly know her. Industry is not very good. Um, I'm looking to see if we get any advancement on industry at all. Simplify designs. Boundaries of Boreal would be good. Core Christian Gus goes down by 50%. Hmm. The Oregon Trails. Ancient pioneers used to seek out this land. We're wasting it. Let's try to build what was once lost. We got enough weapons right now, and even demo equipment's not bad. Um, well, you know what? We don't have enough. I'm gonna throw demos on these guys. And demos, as well as more infantry on here, too. Will we have enough for that? Yeah, we will. But we need that basically right now. Do we have any anti tank? No, we have absolutely none. God dang it, that's not good. There, take the ultimatum. The ward is. All right. Well, this is gonna go probably really badly for us. Um, I may have to do some funky stuff here, maybe. What is it they want? We have eleven thousand slaves. That's not bad. There's no point even have arms workshops because it doesn't really do anything for us during peacetime, which really freaking sucks. Save collars, more guns, manpower. 
Um, infantry armor, anti tank, spec ops coordinator. How much money do we have? We got a decent amount. Uh, butcher's Pete stuff, slashing, gun runners. Any higher opinion? There, buy some more guns in. So then supplies come low. A little ahead of time. Uh, what do we want next? Source extraction wouldn't be bad. Well, we can go with this for now, I guess. We're at forty percent, which is good. We need to bribe this guy, so we need to save our political power no matter what. And then after this one, we'll be at war again. Well, we'll probably need to do this one since we're going to the right side anyways. A heavy core doctrine would be nice, but oh well. The core can revive a three-line formation. This formation will let the second and third lines prove provide cover to the shock troops of the first line, and the front line can hold a greenness troops who need blooding. The forge of the cardinals. Um, the worthy few. Terror warfare. Kaiser has emerged engaged in decades of warfare, absorbing lesser tribes, gathering power. Forging the drones into a vast razor sharp scythe. The Legion's expansion has never ceased, and that has given a worthy few to lead the Legion and thus cohort. So if we go to war, we should be okay. That would be offensive. We need a bonus against their attack. Because how strong are they? 8 to 18. They've got plenty of manpower. We have plenty of manpower ourselves. You can find the war bands, Ken's cast. But my goal would just be to hold as much as possible. Where are we at for occupied territories? So Western pacification. Pass by them as fast as you possibly can. Ooh, dockyard, huh? Actually, your mates up in here, huh? Go figure. Junonius Septidium. I said that completely wrong. Yeah, because if we're offensive, how long is it going to take for them to go to war with us? Oh, long, long time. Well, you know what? I'll save here for them. See what happens. that one to do. Oh, we can assassinate him right now. But I want to bribe him. Better be careful with that manpower then. So if we go to war with them, will our soldiers be able to hold out? Because then we get all that stability. I'll get Kabi takes control of the she. Because now we can actually produce stuff here, which is the most important thing here, really. Astralis, not bad. Ooh. Taking more of the line now. Which is good for XP, don't get me wrong, as well. Ooh, another force needed attack. Really not ideal. <laughs> Organ Trails, nice. Gives us more, uh, weekly power, power pounds, balance change. Soft attack. 45 days is a long time, though. Eleven thousand slaves. What happened here? Oh, no. Oh, look at that political power, though. Alright, so oh, we're going to bribe him. Saltus is the man of few words. He'll need some convincing. And Australis, his old friend, has a few ideas. Give him more power to him, and he'll be forever loyal to us. And we need to assassinate this guy. If the lower Praetorian is dead, our rule on the Northwest will be safe. Kaiser might have sent him to watch over us, but he's only getting in the way. His death will secure our future. 60 days, eh? We're actually holding out. Who else is justifying against us? Anybody? Oh, hello. That's certainly not good. I'll usually go right there.
Hey, got rid of an enemy division. Alright, so that's pretty good. This is probably honestly the only way we can actually do anything here. We killed off 480, which is pretty decent overall. That political power, we need at least 100 to keep so we can assassinate him, right? Yeah. We could go to here, but that's really going to start hurting us even more. Anything for Navy? Does it matter? No. Flyboy? Does it matter? No. Survival training. Anything here important? Construction speed. Research speed. We're funding the army. Actually, would that be beneficial for us? We're barely making anything right now, but that could help out a little bit. What should we get? Uh, but one a day is not bad, actually. Yeah, so after that one, Timberline Conquest. Yeah, that would be good to do in Klamath Conquest. Who conquered Klamath? Two of the Centurions of Asp, but Aranidus, I shut him up. I have a gateway, great gateway to the south, bringing traders from Nevada into our lands, and I do have some nice geckos, but I think we'll end it there. We're actually doing better than I thought we would. It's it's a little, I wouldn't say tedious, it's just uh, you just be very careful with the decisions that you make in our current decisions. So we're, we're actually making stuff finally, maybe, except for entry equipment and maybe some entry armor, but that's all right. We'll get there eventually. We're trying. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a fat like. Subscribe if you are new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. I will see what else we can do and hopefully take out the Troll War. And thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.